Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the chi-squared goodness of fit test. It's one of two chi-squared tests that you will learn about. So the goodness of fit test and the chi-squared test for independence will be in the other one. It's assuming that you are familiar with the basic steps of a chi-squared test. Step one, to state the null and alternative hypotheses. Then to calculate the expected frequencies. To, step, to state the significance level and to calculate the number of degrees of freedom. On your calculator, to calculate the test statistic and the p-value to state the acceptance and rejection criteria, and finally step six, to draw a conclusion. The chi-squared goodness of fit test is used to test whether sample data fits a given distribution. And for the null hypothesis, we write the data fits the specified distribution. And the alternative hypothesis, the data does not fit the specified distribution. For example, we might perform a test to find out whether a particular die is biased, in which case we'd write the null hypothesis is that the data collected fits a uniform distribution. In other words, the die is fair. Or the alternative hypothesis then would be that the data does not fit the uniform distribution. In other words, the die is not fair. To carry out a chi-squared goodness of fit test, observed frequencies need to be recorded in a frequency table or grouped frequency table. For example, we might roll our die 60 times and record the number of occurrences for each number in our frequency table as shown on the right here. So the aim of the test is to try to find out whether the data collected supports the null hypothesis. The table of collected data is called the observed frequencies. The expected frequencies are calculated for each value on the dice, assuming the null hypothesis to be true. So in our example, we would expect the probability of 1 6 for each of the numbers. So the expected frequencies, we would multiply 60 by 1 6. So we'd expect each of those numbers to occur 10 times. The observed and expected frequencies can be shown in two lists. For a goodness of fit test, the number of degrees of freedom is found by using the formula n minus 1, where n is the number of groups or the number of values in this case. So in our example, there are six values or six observed frequencies. So the number of degrees of freedom is six minus one, equal to five. This means that once you've calculated five of your expected frequencies, the sixth one doesn't need to be calculated because it's not free to vary. It has to give the, uh, a sum of 60, so it's constrained. The significance level determines the threshold for making a decision. Along with the number of degrees of freedom, it sets what's called the critical value. And you'll be told the significance level in the question. It'll either be 1, 5 or 10% level. The formula for the test statistic is given here, but it's only given here in case you decide to use a chi-square test in your internal assessment. So for, for exams, we will calculate the test statistic on the calculator. And I'll show you how to do that now. So on your calculator, if you press menu and then uh, statistics, it's option two, and then you'll see that um, <clears throat> we have the, the lists menu. And if the lists are already populated, you'll need to clear them. And the way we clear them is we press F6, followed by F4, delete all, and confirm that with a yes, 
and then move the cursor to another list and repeat the process. F4, delete all, and confirm with F1. And even for that, it's F3. Press F4 again to delete all and confirm it by pressing F1. So we're now ready to enter the data into list 1 and list 2. So if we enter the observed frequencies into list 1, that's 20, 10, 5, 8, 7, and 10, and the expected frequencies in list 2. Of course, being a uniform distribution, they're all 10. Then to calculate the test statistic and the p-value, if we then press F6 twice, we'll get back to the main menu here. We'll press F3 for test, F3 again for chi-squared test, and F1 for a goodness of fit test. For the goodness of fit test, we must enter the degrees of freedom ourselves. So as in my example, Degrees of freedom were five. So if I scroll down and set the degrees of freedom to five, as shown in the example. Then if we press enter or execute, the results will be displayed. So in the example with the die, the test statistic, chi-squared, test value is 13.8 and the p-value is 0 0.0169. So to draw a conclusion in uh, a chi-squared test, we are either can compare the p-value to the significance level or we can compare the test statistic to the critical value if it's given in the question. If we're using the first method, if the p-value is less than the significance level, then there's sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. If we're using the second method, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, then again, there's sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. If not, we accept the null hypothesis. And the final step is to make the conclusion. If the conclusion is not to reject the null hypothesis, then we would say that there is sufficient evidence at the um, given significance level to suggest that the data fits the specified distribution. If the conclusion, however, was to reject the null hypothesis, then we would say that there's sufficient evidence at that level of significance to suggest that data does not fit the specified distribution. So in our example, testing at the 5% level of significance, the p-value was 0 0.0169 and 5% is 0 0.05. And 0 0.0169 is smaller than 0 0.05. In other words, the p-value is less than the significance level. So we reject the null hypothesis. And we would say that there is sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level to suggest that the data does not fit a uniform distribution. In other words, the die is biased.